after studying this module you shall be able to know about recovery of evidence from grape you will learn about the steps followed to carry to recovery of forensic evidence from a grape a multidisciplinary approach is adopted for investigation of a grape this approach help expert to carry out a well managed team framework archaeology helps in understanding buried environments a forensic archaeologist extract out buried evidences which might be present in recoverable and recordable form sometimes it is necessary to search the area near the grave to collect more evidences in case of older graves it is little difficult to find evidences but there are chances that some evidences still survive in a recoverable condition the background analysis of the site should be done to analyze the type of soil various plants and animals insects etc for example soft tissue will survive long in case of water logged clay environment and saponification of the body may occur whereas in case of gravel or free draining chalk process of decaying or skeletonization is fast to decide the best recovery strategies logistics and for informing which type of equipment or material might be needed the site background analysis is done establishment of test pit help in distinguishing between the natural soil and the soil which was accidentally introduced through a vehicle or clothes during crime and natural substrates which are present in the soil now let us understand about the excavation that is the information and logistics the process of excavation of grave site will depend on the case for example in some grave may have been located as a part of the search for a missing person where post interval is known and in some cases the site might have been located by the member of the public without any information about the period of decomposition or even the name of the victim every forensic case is unique and greater experience the archaeologist have the more likely is that he or she will be able to recognize the wider amplification of the evidential requirement role of specialist archaeological methods required etc the information required and the objective of investigation will also determine the approach followed it is it will not only adhere the archaeological purity or the objective should be transparent for instances the investigative officer may keep some of the information with himself for various strategic reasons which may affect the archaeological strategy keeping this in mind the archaeologist should ask the appropriate question which relate to the case local factors and the time intervals involved now let us see the equipment requirement most of the archaeologists have their own excavation equipment and other technical equipment such as gps and edm better serving equipment and skilled personnel are present with the police these days wheel barrows are difficult and might need to be purchased specially minimum of two borrowers are needed list of equipment are brought in advance by most scene managers to manage and use the equipment archaeologists need to be present archaeologists should be present at the scene with all necessary equipment to be self sufficient including the basic items like buckets some of the equipment will never be used again as they might be used to collect evidences or might become contaminated lost or wrecked from the point of view of the contingency it is also preferable to maintain a stock of variously sized sealed fine type bags and sample bottles most scene of crime vents are well stocked but there may be several incident running simultaneously and facilities may be stretched for collection of microscopic evidences and pollens and spores containers are needed clean or new container should always be used to avoid any remote possibility of contamination 
best practice is maintain an equipment log that records the cleaning of equipment after each use that is using distilled or deionized water and the storage of items in a clean and secure location. Now let us see verification of grave. After assessment of wider area, verification of grave should be done depending on the reliability of the information known. Appropriate method is used. Different strategies are used according to the situation. For example, grave noticed by a person or a grave found during the search if the wider area will have different strategies of verification. Proper photography and videography records of the scene have to be done before carrying out the invasive technique. The recording should be undertaken in presence of crime personnel. Careful cleaning and recording of surface area is done. Edges are outlined and a narrow trench is excavated across the subject area. To find edges of possible grave cut, this trench should be of maximum of 50 cm but need to be extended across the beyond suspected area. All graves are not rectangular or appropriately equal to the height of the adult. In some cases, an unpredictability murders often result in grave constructions as a scoop with varied dimension and shape. Burial of bodies can be in any position. Sometimes the body might be incompletely, whereas in some cases it may be complete but disarticulated. Depending upon the equipment and method used to dig a grave, considerable amount of time might be required even by a stronger and healthy individual. To bury the body deeper and securely, digging of grave can even be more time consuming and the chances of being observed increases. It is difficult to dig a grave in gravels as the sites become fluid and maintaining the depth and contour can be difficult. Similar issues can be faced in case of alluvial slits. Excavation in such cases or areas is also difficult. In such areas, grief cut might be indistinct even if it is recent. This demonstrates the importance of test pit in order to analyze similar characteristics and indicator of disturbance. When a part of grave is cut and any subsequent burial will be readily apparent, then it is known as Saundage method. This method should be preferred so that loss of evidence is minimum. During simple search in case of human remains may be found. The search develops into major incident which may lead to increased funding and prioritization of resources. Now let us see excavation strategy. When human remains are found then the scene is secured and no further work is carried out unless the pathologist is present or agreeable. Permission to excavate further can be taken on telephonic conversation if there is a mutual understanding between archaeologist and the pathologist. Such an arrangement is a mutual advantage. It allows the archaeologist to excavate and records the remainder of the grave down to the body at the professionally acceptable speed. And it minimizes the time the pathologist has to wait at the scene in order for the body to be recovered in full. The interval helps the archaeologist to plan a recovery strategy on the basis of various factors such as soil profile etc. Specific excavation techniques are discussed are selected before excavation recording system is set up to identity EDM or mutual system. A baseline is established and context sheet planning borders are prepared. Sediment or soil layer might be present on grave or its adjacent land surface. Excavation of these can be done individually under ideal condition and can be checked for many material advanced evidences or biological and entomological reasons. These layer might not have any significance with crime but it may contain materials that help determine the date before which the burial occurred. With the intention of concealing the grave, it is possible that culprit might have deposited such material intentionally. 
therefore any evidence regarding the data of deposition nature of place of origin is considered important after removing these layers of the top of the grave will become apparent and clearly visible the material inside the grave might be different in color compactness moist or dryness etc local condition and features of burial will be reflected by the degree of differences Experienced archaeologists with proper equipment should excavate a grave. During initial testing, half sectioning can be removed more rigorously during initial testing. Half sectioning is the best way in most situation. It helps in determining whether that the feature is a grave or not without removing the whole fill. Numbering of all material should be done since archaeology is a destructive process. Numbering of material is necessary. it is useful for a court and investigation authority once all the evidentiary part material is collected and the remains are exposed as much as possible then the body can be taken out this is the major point of excavation process as the main evidence that is the human remains have been revealed and needs to be recorded through photographs documentation etc till the process of excavation is complete nothing can be disturbed just like any other crime scene now let us see identifying evidence during the process of creating a grave three steps are followed digging deposition and infilling these points should be kept in mind and reverse should be followed in the process of recovery integrity of the grave should be maintained during excavation the necessity is that during excavation where practically possible every care must be taken to ensure that the sides of the grave right down to the base are revealed and maintained if the care not taken the process is prone to acquisitions of contamination from surrounding layers or may lead to the insufficient collection of evidence especially above the base of the grave below the body where the material such as coins buttons etc can be collected after decomposition of the body clues about mode of digging direction of digging and tools used to determine from the grave in case of non criminal context of burial grave cut fill and evidences on the around the body are important and serve as the main evidence available for investigation potential of evidence can be realized only when excavation is performed by experienced experts evidences will be examined a few questions need to be answered such as how was the grave dug and with uh, implements was the grave dug in a hurry or was it is carefully prepared is there evidence of grave being left upon before burial of the body is there evidence of post mortem interval etc now let us see the collecting and reporting evidence after completion of the excavation work the work done by archaeologist moves into post excavation mode just like other excavation after the completion of event it is necessary to produce a return report of or statement archaeologist will be the expert witness and all the evidence are collected and tied together crime scene persons has complete the necessary paperwork before proceeding to another case dictaphones or return notes anything can be used to maintain the records working at a crime scene can be stressful and it is all too easy for get the obvious when under pressure further having a count and page number system ensures that the complete record will be submitted and cannot be doctored either by addition or omission at the point of disclosure essentially the strategy is, is back covering as well as efficient less records can be criticized as being an inadequate record and thus can be considered as unprofessional whereas over recording exposes it is cross examination the correct balance of records it is important so that objective observation and record can be rapidly transferred into simple narrative keeping things simple is best the file created by archaeologist will be in return form duly signed and in a simple narration which describes the complete process from beginning to end digging of grave use of grave and filling of grave everything will be outlined in this report this will be presented in along with the records maintained regarding all the exhibits all statements should be straight forward without excessive hypothesis and all main elements should be mentioned about what happened the timing and the process undertaken the reasons for undertaking the process and outcomes 
Now let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Archaeology helps in understanding buried environments. A forensic archaeologist extract out buried evidences which might be present in recoverable and recordable form. Establishment of test pit help in distinguishing between the national soil and the soil which have accidentally introduced through a vehicle or a clothes during the crime and the natural substrate which are present in the soil. Every forensic case is unique and greater experience the archaeologist have, the more likely it is that he or she will be able to recognize wider implications of the evidential requirement, role of specialist archaeological methods required etc. Archaeologists should be present at the scene with all necessary equipment to be self-sufficient including the basic items of the buckets. For collection of microscopic evidence and pollen and spores, containers are needed. Clean or new container should always be used to avoid any remote possibility of contamination. Careful cleaning and recording of the surface area is done, edges are outlined and a narrow trench is excavated across the suspected area. When a part of grave is cut and any subsequent burial will be readily apparent and then it is known as sondage method. This method should be preferred so that loss of evidence is minimum. Recording system is set up to identify EDM or manual system. A baseline is established and context sheet planning, boards, etc. are prepared. Any evidence regarding the date of deposition, nature of place of origin is considered important. During initial testing, half sectioning can be removed more rigorously during initial testing. Half sectioning is best way. In most situations, it helps in determining whether that the feature is a grave or not without removing the whole fill. Numbering of all material should be done. During the process of creating a grave, three steps are followed that is digging, deposition and infilling. These points should be kept in mind and reverse should be followed in the process of recovery. If this care is not taken, the process is prone to acquisitions of contamination from surrounding layers or may lead to insufficient collection of evidence, especially above the base of the grave below the body, where materials such as coins, buttons, etc. can be collected after decomposition of body. Crime scene persons has to complete the necessary paperwork before proceeding to the another case. Dectaphones or return notes, anything can be used to maintain the records. Working at a crime scene can be stressful and it is all too easy for get the obvious when under pressure. The file created by archaeologist will be returned from duly signed and in simple narration which describes the complete process from beginning to end. Digging of grave, use of grave and felling of grave, everything will be outlined in that report. All statements should be straightforward without excessive hypothesis and all the main elements should be mentioned about what happened, the timing and process undertaken, the reasons for undertaking the process and the outcomes.